Steve Bruce himself um, has, well, it's a quite extraordinary in many ways because people, well, maybe he's just telling the truth. Listen to what he's had to say about criticism that he receives, and in particular, criticism from one journalist. Simon, you put, you put him in his place a few times. He needs putting in his place because, unfortunately, Simon, in all of it, right, you know, your, your, your radio station gives him air. Thing that makes him feel a little bit special, you know? And for me, sometimes he's, he's just totally unbalanced. It's always a negative. And that, for me, he's totally wrong. Yeah, that's Steve Bruce there talking about an individual, Craig Hope, uh, Martin's uh, colleague at the Daily Mail. Um, and I don't know what you made of this, Sean. Um, first of all, I mean, is he right about Craig Hope? Is he always negative about Steve and about Newcastle? Sorry, Newcastle. Well, um I said a few weeks ago when Steve was complaining about the story Craig did in the mail about uh, the bust up behind the scenes that I thought he was wrong to ban him because uh, it was a true story. There was nothing they could pick holes in about that specific story. And it was a very good story. It was a very good old fashioned journalism story about a bust up at the training ground. And I said to you at the time that I've got a lot of respect for Steve Bruce. He's very good to me when I was a, a young journalist. Mm. We've stayed uh, in contact. Now and again, not so much now that I'm not always on the on the road, but he's a he's top bloke. Martin, very similar, has a good relationship with him too. So we res respect him, which is why I feel I could say to him, I don't think you got this one right. I, I don't think that particular issue um, about the bust up, he was right to ban him. It's wrong. It's a good story. I don't think you should have done it. But this is getting, <laughs> it seems to me, getting a bit out of hand between the two of them now. Craig. I, I think has become pretty negative about Newcastle, but he is reflecting the way a lot of fans feel. I mean, I was loving the match on Friday night, the way Newcastle played, best performance I've seen in a couple of years, thought they were fantastic, Definitely. but made to mine, it didn't make a blind bit of difference. They still said, no, nah, I still want him out. I said, what's the matter with you? This is fantastic. We're playing really, really well. Maybe it's the start of something big. They're still not having it. And I think Craig is reflecting some of the general view on Townside, which personally I don't agree with, but a lot of fans do. I mean, uh, Sean, in your long and storied career, have you ever got into yeah. a place where managers are calling you out? I mean, because this is for journalists. I mean, you know, you want you want to have relationships with these people mm -hmm. and you want to be able to talk to them straightforward and all the rest of it. But this is a very unusual thing where an individual well, journalist is is being uh, called out to use that same expression by a, a, a football manager. It does it does happen. I had an issue, uh, particularly one with Bobby Robson. I wrote in the in the middle of a piece, I I wrote middle of a feature that Newcastle needed four different dressing rooms for the players because there were so many different factions, and Bobby read this went absolutely nuts at a press conference, which I wasn't at told everybody I didn't have the guts to see him because I wasn't at this particular press conference. It made the front page of uh, the Industry Bible, which is called Press Gazette. It was actually on the front page about Bobby slagging me off. I've got a mate called Jeff Brown who presents the local evening news up there yeah. who came out and said, I'm sorry, Sean, I'm going to have to run this. It's great telly! The way Bobby slagging me off, David Craig of Sky, he went on saying how Bobby was slagging me off. And I went in to see Bob, he, he challenged me to come up and see him and I went in to see him um, and he started off having absolute run. They tell me you're a Newcastle fan. Are you kidding me? You're not, are you? And all of that. And then we sort of started talking. Tell me your credentials. What do you know about football? And we started having a big debate about how um, uh, my wife's cousin had played for North Shields in the FA, I think it was the FA Vars final in 1969. Wow. He was called Alan Driver and, and Bobby knew Alan Driver and he knew all the North Shields team and we ended up having a long conversation about that. And then at the end, Bobby said, all right, son, we move on. It's done. And he was perfectly great after that. And he, he had a good conversation about it. And it, it it was a brilliant conversation. I was in there for about half an hour. He'd start off ranting with me and by the end, you know, we parted. So, not agree, agreeing to disagree, if you like. And on we went. I mean, the relationship I mean, was the, fine. In the age of, of social media, I mean, I know it must be annoying for football managers and personalities to hear themselves, uh, to read themselves being slaughtered, not just in the paper papers, but also in the electronic media. And of course, I have run many, many phone-ins myself over the years where literally you open up the lines and you can hear an hour and a half of vitriol about X player or X manager, Y manager, and all the rest of it. I'm, I sometimes amaze, Sean, 
how much uh, influence they still, how much uh, they still think these things matter. I, I think they, they could have developed a much oh, thicker skin by now. No, I think somebody like Steve Bruce, who wears his heart on his sleeve, he, he does take criticism to heart. Lots of people take criticism to heart. And I can, you know, that's allowed. You're allowed to take yeah, criticism to heart. You're allowed. Human Steve beings, Bruce yes. has had an absolute battering since he's been manager of Tyneside. Some of it, in my view, undeserved. But... It's very, very difficult for him to turn that round now, which is why I think he's alluding to the fact today that he won't necessarily stay um, next season. It's a job he always wanted, and he's and he's been battered. And lots of fans are not going to change their mind, no matter how many types of performances he puts on, like the game against Leicester. I think it's going to be very, very difficult to turn around. I think that's a bit of a shame because I think he does love being doing that job. You know, it's almost like the fans have spoken, they voted, and they just don't want him. They don't want him, they don't want Mike Ashley. They want total change, new owners, new new manager. And I think Steve's wow. just feeling completely battered and think, I'll never, I'll never change this. Yeah, I mean, on a human level, of course, um, uh, you know, p- players and particularly managers get all this chip. I, I mean, I do feel... Um, a certain degree of sympathy with them because, you know, yeah, they are that. human beings. I agree and- that. And he's being made out to be some sort of sort of numpty, uh, and which is, this is a man who, you know, won titles with Manchester United, I think got the best possible out of himself in his playing career. You know, went to the very top from humble beginnings, grew up North East, you know, Norwich, Gillingham, I think he was 26 or 27 before he even joined United. And, you know, became hugely respected as a player with a very humble attitude as well. And yet, the, I, I almost feel his career doesn't deserve the battering he's getting now. And he's stuck in there because he, he almost wants to prove people wrong. And actually, we could well be in a situation by the end of this season where the points hole is pretty similar to Rafa Benitez's for the last two seasons. Don't you dare say that. Don't well, you dare mention look, his name in the same sentence as the Saint, Rafa. Well, no, Don't but do I that. agree. To, no, but I was, <laughs> I was on Rafa Benitez's side as well because I think if he had been supported in the transfer market, I think he would have taken Newcastle. Sure. New but the fact is, Steve Bruce is doing with limited resources, pretty much, points-wise, what Rafa was doing. And Rafa did have some pretty awful performances as a Newcastle manager, or, or maybe boring ones, let's put it that yeah, way, yeah. and rarely produced a performance like the one Newcastle produced against Leicester on Friday night. 